This is going to be a quick technical preview of the upcoming NAS capabilities of Dell EMC Extreme IO. Extreme IO market leading all flash array will offer transaction NAS capabilities that match the experience and expectations of Extreme IO customers, which are consistent and predictable performance for file and block, online scale out when extra performance is needed, etc. This is achieved by combining scale-out NAS technology from legacy Dell, which is the FluidFS product, which matches the tenants of Extreme I.O. The core benefits of inline data services such as dedupe and compression are shared whether you use file or block capabilities, together with NFS version 3 and 4.1, SMB2, M3, snapshots, native replications, customers have a champion product. Here we can see the capacity screen, which tend to suggest how much physical capacity we use, how much compression is being applied for that work set. Same goes for the duplication, and then eventually we can see how much capacity, logical capacity, is actually being shared. The blue represent the block capacity, and the purple one represent the new capabilities of the NAS part. So let's go to the performance tab and view how it looks. Here we can see the unified UI for both the block and the NAS capabilities of the product. And it's a true unified screen. We can do whatever we got used to from one management console. We don't need to jump between hooks to see how it works. If we scroll down, we can also see other important metrics such as top volumes and top initiator groups. So this is the menu UI screen. Now let's go ahead and actually provision a NAS volume. Press the NAS volume, give the NAS volume a name. In our case, I'm going to call it Oracle underscore DB1. Let's go ahead and give it a size of 10 terabyte. And finally, let's press the Create button. Now we just created the NAS volume. Let's go ahead and create an NFS export. So we're going to mount this NFS export to the root volume, so which is what you see here. Now let's create the Create button. And now we have an NFS export being ready for the user to use. So let's go ahead and see how it looks. Let's go to the NAS configuration bar. And this is our NFS export that we just created called Oracle DB. That's the NAS volume itself. And that's the NFS export that we just mounted to the root folder. Now that we created the database volume, we're actually going to run a database volume workload on it. So let's go back to the main performance view. So let's press the dashboard screen again. And we can see that we get higher file performance because we just started to use the file for additional workload running Oracle database. Now let's go ahead and examine the health tab. So let's click it. And what we can see to the right is how many extreme IO block appliances are currently being used and how many file appliances are currently being used in this unified solution. Currently, we see up to four appliances, which are based on eight active-active controllers, and we want to expand this. The reason that we want to expand this is maybe we want an additional file workload capabilities and we need more performance. How do we do it? Very easily. Let's go to this icon here, which is the setting icon, press it, and press the scale out button. Here we can view the additional appliances that we can add to provide file capabilities when we need extra performance. So let's select this one and let's give the both of the controllers here an IP address. Each appliance is based on two active active controllers. Let's give the second controller an IP address. So now that we've added both IP addresses, let's press the add button. And we can see the new NAS appliance being added to the system online. And as you can see, it's visible here. Now let's go ahead to the performance tab and see how much performance we gain. So this is the file performance and we suddenly see the speedometer is giving us more performance because we just added one appliance to the other five or four that were already running in the system before and. Before, and we got roughly 322,000 file IOPS, and now we get roughly 422 file IOPS. This will, of course, vary depends on the workload and the block size that you will use inside the system itself. Okay, now let's go ahead and examine some additional capabilities of the NFS protocol. So let's go to the NAS configuration tab, and this is the Oracle database volume that we created, and we want to take a snapshot of it. So let's just press the copy button and create a snapshot. 
So let's give the snapshot a name. Oracle DB minus snap one and press the create button. The snapshot is being created and here we can see the snapshot itself. The NFS snapshot capabilities are very efficient, almost on par as the block NFS snapshot block snapshot capabilities of Extreme IO. Lastly, let's examine a very cool feature of the file part of Extreme IO. Let's go to the virtual machine tab. And what we're going to do here is something is very interesting. Instead of just cloning a VM like we normally do, even if it supports inline e duplication, like in the case of the block protocol of Extreme IO with metadata a share, which basically gives you a cloning capabilities that are very, very fast. Why don't we just take a snapshot? After all, we're dealing with NFS, so we're dealing at the file level protocol, so every VM requires its own file. So instead of just taking a clone, what we're going to do here is leverage the unique integration with vCenter and just take a fast clone of that VM, which is basically going to use the NFS snapshot capabilities of the file part of Extreme.io. Just press the fast clone button. Here I'm getting a prompt of how many VMs I want to clone this master VM. So let's select two. Let's give the VM clone suffix a name. Oracle underscore DB1. Let's select the destination data store that we want to clone this VM to. That's it. We have additional features such as we want to power up the VM and whether we want to apply customization specs in order to make a unique seed for the VM. For the sake of the demo, we're not going to do it. Just press the clone button. The cloning take place. And eventually we get additional two VMs. This is again very efficient because we don't really clone the VMs. We just get a snapshot of them, which is instantaneous at the system itself. It's a very interesting integration between vCenter to the file capabilities of Extreme.io. So that's it. That was a quick technical preview of the upcoming file capabilities of Extreme.io with the new user interface. I hope you enjoyed.